So let's start just by bringing everything to the center. <clears throat> and then allow your hands to touch in the center. And then opening, we'll just do a little bit of breathing. Are you, are you practicing uh, yoga? You had a yoga practice that you were working. You still practice? What's that? And you, like, I don't know where you can hear me and where you can. Can you hear me here? Yeah. I said, yeah, I practice all the time. Okay, so you don't need you don't need to stretch. We can just work on. I didn't <clears throat> practice today. No, it's okay. Just just something to to. A lot of times, my stretches for my classes are uh, because. Most of those people don't have an asana practice. They don't have some type of tendon stretching practice. So uh, everybody is on a different uh, place on their on their journey. So stretch for um, forearms and in hands, especially for if you work on keyboards um, and stuff like that. If you want, I can show you. Yeah, just sitting in front of the computer, the overall posture is <clears throat> the real, <clears throat> real issue. Do two more of these. And at some point when you get to the top, bring your feet back together. Allow everything to go back to the center. And then breathing deep. And then if you have if you have space, uh, <clears throat> because we're not gonna we're not gonna stretch, we could just start walking in a circle. So just a, a normal, comfortable, relaxed walk. So this is sort of Bagua basics and uh, I have one teacher refer to, to Bagua as a finishing school for Tai Chi. So if we're just walking in a circle, and you can make this circle very small. You can make it so that it's the toe and the heel and the heel and the toe and the toe and the heel. You can make this circle this small so that it's one foot. You can make four sides, you can make eight sides, and you can make a spiral that gets progressively larger. But the feeling is a comfortable circle, and we're looking towards the center, or we're looking towards what's chasing us, what's behind, something like this. And then to balance it out, do some going in the other direction. You can become dizzy. So for people practicing at home, watching a YouTube video later, uh, just be very aware of how your, your feeling of... Uh, balances when walking in a circle. Same thing again, we can make the circle very, very small, touching toe to heel, heel to toe, right, this kind of thing. And uh, that becomes an exercise, it becomes more theory. So just this kind of casual walking, just like regular walking. <clears throat> and this is, uh, this is good to practice, this is good information for people practicing the form because this is a part of the forum where everybody has a question. There's a lot of stuff happening. And so just going right into the Tai Chi, this is the, the end of the second section. After we have, uh, we'll go from, you said bend the bar, but it's a little bit after that point. So the name for this one in Mandarin is left deflect, and we're turning the hand and foot, and the movement is this scooping that comes up to kick this way, right? So from bend the bar, coming out of launch way, punch. This is, the heel is pivoting here. The circle turning, gripping the foot. And then opening. So for this one, for bend the bar, by the way, uh, TC, and you can see it in uh, Dr. Yang's book as well. If I'm facing forward in the camera, I have my square step this way. From the punch, when I open this front foot and step after they kick, the arms, they're opening out here. So it's something like this. 
I have changed it just a little bit so that after I'm doing this movement, instead of opening both arms, I'm bringing one arm lower. You can bring both of them up. And it determined, what's determining this is what's happening in the application. The idea is, after I've done a punch, somebody has caught, like grasped the sparrow's tail, caught my fist. And if they've caught my fist, and they're holding on to it, bend the bar is me bringing my center closer to them. I'm opening my foot so I can step in. And then once I've reached under, I can peel and kick in this way. Extending the hand up brings their hand up here. But you can just... So this is a little bit like crane. But we can leave it round this way as well. As long as the arms aren't straight. So the idea is... Uh, and I, I want to say that we've worked on this one at the park in Westwood. After we have the punch, when this is turning here, this hand is reaching under to peel off and then both hands turning out, they, they're unfolding this way. And if you bring them both high, or one high, one low, either way, making the, the yin and yang, the taiji symbol. And so that's facing west. This is, by the way, the same ordering uh, when we would practice in, in Westwood, in Malibu, the directions are the same. So when we start the form, we always start facing north. So in this form, Bend the bar is always facing west. We have peel off and kick. The direction of the big rollback is always going from west to east. And so we want to turn, even turning back as far as looking west. And then the second big rollback from east to west. And then if you watch my turn all the way back to the east. And then scoop the moon from the ocean facing the 45, kick southwest, brush. Two winds in the ear, also on the 45. I'm, I'm sort of pointing towards the corner of the square. And then when we step back, this is pull and kick. So if I'm facing, let's just say I'm facing due west, something like this, and power is coming towards me, the idea is I can step back connect to that power and kick. So even if my power is extended in that direction, when I step back, this hand is blocking, kicking. And then the turn, this is what we're going to work on in a minute. So even if I'm going in this direction, my retreat contains an avoid, a make contact, and an, an advance. Every posture has those three phases. So when I'm here, I step back, pull, kick, and then when I turn, I'm actually, the turning has the same principle, avoid, make contact in advance. So if I just use the straight line, if I use the straight line of my, uh, the carpet, right, this, this line here. If I'm facing this direction, I step back, I kick, and then my loop makes a small circle. And then I'm facing back on this line again. So I want to turn three, uh, 360 degrees. But we're going to use the left side and the right side to make that so that it doesn't, we don't have to turn quite as far. So facing in this direction, after we have two winds in the air, we're stepping back. We're standing on the right foot. And so whether we do this big fancy kick or whether we just pull and kick this way. Remember, the opponent is walking towards us. So as they come in, we want to steer their momentum in and down to kick. And then when we turn, step once. Step twice. I'm already starting to return back to the line. Step a third time. And the same as power is coming. We control the direction and add the power to it. <clears throat> that makes sense? I'm sorry, say that again? What do you do with your other hand? Okay, so let's talk about that. The turning uh, is kind of like when we turn between the first, second, and second section, and the second section and third section, which is if I'm facing north, when I turn, my hands are here. So this is, this is a sort of a, a hidden 
boxing idea that occurs in, in a number of martial arts and just very basic rudimentary if when people in a, in a car accident or some kind of action they cover their head this way uh, my teacher Master Yun at Yishui refers to this action as Ku Bao Tu which Bao is the same as when we say uh, Bao Yu is holding the moon right Hu Bao is means tiger hugs or tiger holding and Tu is the head Tu Hu Bao Tu so this is tiger holding its head and this is the idea if somebody wants to wants to punch you or hit you if you put your hands here right you can protect all this stuff but you also have this right which is this elbow it's a very pointy thing so as a sort of offensive defense one of the things when, when we practice uh, MMA style boxing if somebody's punching here and I can put this up and I have a big point here and they want to punch towards my face and I can catch their fist with my elbow yeah maybe it may hurt me a little bit but it's gonna really really hurt their hand so this is one of the first ideas this is also uh, it's very defensive if somebody is punching right they're punching in our face and we have this at least we can cover the ears we can cover the the uh, bio parts this is one of the things with the arms so we pass through this movement when we're turning after we have this pull to kick when we turn we start to cover our head because we want to uh, make sure that right even if we're running away hands can cover the back of the head this type of thing but also the same way uh, if we have to deal with I gotta turn one of these cameras off here if we have to deal with uh, say an opponent has a has a weapon or they have some kind of gun right something like this and if they're here in front of us this action of covering the head this is a this is like a, a like okay don't shoot right when the police come out they have their guns and weapons we say don't shoot this is is close enough to here right so if somebody if we have an opponent that's in front of us even if they have some kind of weapon something here in front is the very idea here don't shoot, right? This puts our hands in a ready position to do whatever it is we need to do. So the first thing is we're turning. Power is coming. We've done the uh, two winds in the air. Then when we step back, we pull to kick. And there's another opponent coming in this direction, approaching on this line. So instead of turning in place and getting hit, we make a, a detour off of the line only to return back to the same place. Right, so the idea is to make the opponent, their line of travel is going to change as they see if they're traveling in this direction. As we start to turn in that way, they're going to follow. So our, our, our objective is when we step back to kick here, is to get them to start to go in this direction. And so as they start to lead this way, as we turn, we approach from the side, we don't have to face them front on. We want to get them to start to change, and as they change, we have an advantage. Makes sense so far? Questions, thoughts, comments? Let's practice, and we're going to practice if you can, if you have something to use, because sometimes when we do the circle walking, we're putting something in the middle, right? Uh, I don't know how centered that is, we'll just we'll call that thing in the center. And so we have something in the center to focus on. So the same way, if this is my perimeter and I'm dealing with an opponent here, when I step back to kick, I want to get around that perimeter to continue the next set of movement, right? Something like this. Kick. What do you do with your other hand when you kick? Like you pull right, you kick right. Where, where's your left hand? What are you doing? With okay, this is this is a good question. So after we've done two wins in the air, when we step back, there's two ways to do this: the shortened version and the longer version. The shortened version is I'm pulling left side, kicking left side. This other hand is simply ready. So if I face the other direction, if I'm here, once I step back. This one is pulling. This one can be here, right? So, uh, in the in the first school that I attended, they have something that looks more like this, 
right? It's a very prim. This is like the most primitive breakdown of that same shape. But from here, we can pull left, kick left. This hand can be ready to to block. It can strike. It's it's simply re ready. Then remember, we have the, the extended, right? The longer variation. So after when I step back, if I'm pulling something here, right? Power is coming in. Somebody's reaching to my center. I can transfer that to the other hand and continue to pull it back in this direction. Got it. Okay. Right. So that's this is imagine these two circles when we're turning like this. Grass the sparrow's tail left and right, like two wheels in a machinery. And as the opponent reaches in, we make one wheel. And we cause their, we grab their wrist or their hand or their finger, and we drag it around that wheel as long as we can until we can pass it on to this other wheel. And we want to drag it along that wheel as long as we can too. So essentially the opponent is being pulled and twisted through this mechanism. So if I'm facing this way, normally the form goes that way, but so you can see is from here, from uh, two winds in the air. When I step back, I pull, and then I transfer, and then I kick. And then from here, when I turn, two, three, this hand pulling is gonna catch the thing, and then I'm gonna transfer it off to the other hand and kick. So now this, if this water bottle was part of their structure, when it's come in here, and I connect, and then I transfer to this other hand, I've now split their structure all the way across my space, right? So this is the idea, is, is separating, if they have a hand, if they reach into your space, no problem, allow them to reach in, and because your tendons are all loose and open, and relaxed because you're not worried about anything, and theirs are so tight and tense, you can take that hand, or fist, even if there's a knife or gun in it, and extend it as far as you can, then it becomes the length of your structure versus theirs. It doesn't matter uh, if, if there's a power differential. Even if they have long reach, you can, you can uh, lure them off of their, their center. So let's actually practice a couple of times. And so from going from air form of one air, two winds in the air, by the way, is either one of two places, the fists are either landing above the ear or they're landing below the ear. Below the ear, this kind of place is more of a, for boxers, people asking about, they wanna know about how to knock out your opponent with one punch. When you see these videos on the internet of this kind of, this type of violence, this type of thing, this is one of the places, if you can hit underneath here. Hitting above the ear is, uh, an opportunity to potentially do permanent damage to your opponent, potentially kill them. So you have to know the places where to strike, where it's safe, uh, and, and when, if the opponent ha actually has a gun in which to deliver potentially lethal force, you want to you wanna match, match that, or at least be able to defend yourself to where you don't suffer. So two wins in the ear, we can think of it as, or if you just like to maybe deafen your opponent, potentially permanently, you can actually hit the ear itself. But for nerves, for acupressure, for uh, striking points, under the ear, above the ear, you can find all that stuff in books. <clears throat> but so that you have the shape right, remember we have this rounded shape as if we're holding the ball, and, this, and the, the arc is at the top this way. When we step back, standing, on the right foot, grip the feet, and then open to kick, and then turning. We're looking, and we're leading. The hands go up to allow the opponent to think that we're running away, and that we're covering, and we make this small loop to get off of their center line and allow us to attack from the corner. Punch and kick, and then this is block, punch, kick, fen shen, pi shen, shui, long, shui, seal off to trap in or, or roof on so be, and then we turn to close the form. So that's the end of the second section. Let's do that same thing like three more times. So if we start from two wings in the air, and with this one, let's see, is it this way? The right foot's forward, I think. 
fists are either below the ear, above the ear, at the ear. You can see and you can use your mirror when you step back, gripping, standing on the right foot. Kick, turning like you're running away, and then turning back onto the central line. Standing on your left foot, grip the ground. All three of the other limbs are free. Block, punch, kick. Square step, long, shui, rufong, subi. <clears throat> Let's go one more time. From two wins in the ear, the right foot's forward, right foot steps back. Connect, kick, turning. One, two, three. Catch with the right hand, kick with the right foot, block, punch, kick. Step forward, punch. By the way, those kicks actually go to the diagonal. I'm putting them facing west so that we can see it. This is one of the few times when this form, we actually have something here. Most of the time, the form travels north, south, east, and west. Right, so there's this. These kicks actually go to the corner. And then everything else goes back into the north, south, east, and west pattern. <clears throat> Let's do that one more time, and then we'll analyze another part of it, which is the beginning of the turn. So if we have air, fong, guan, air, air is two, e, r, sun, r. So r, fong, wind, in the air, two winds. We step back, kick, turn, one, two, three, Connect and kick, block, punch, kick, step square, open, focus, power in the center. So one of the things when TC taught this is there's a mindset that's happening. And one of the, the ideas for this is that we want to trick our opponent psychologically, psychologically into thinking that we're running away. Because we want to we want to sort of use that retreat to allow that, to lure them in. So, the, one of the ideas is if I'm here and I'm doing two wings in the air, when I step back to pull, when I turn from this second, from this pull, this turning should look like I'm running away, right? The idea is, oh no, don't shoot, right? And I have my hands up, right? I'm turning to run. This turning to run is me actually covering my head. So when I turn back again, I have a, a ability to, to have a surprise, right? So the concept is, uh, we're not, we don't want to show it. We don't want to show the opponent that we're turning to come back in. We're simply, after we're here and we kick, this turn should be, oh no, don't shoot, I'm running away. We should give them the idea that if they're, if they're close to us, right, this, we're surprised, fear, okay? Here, I'm turning to run. Because then, if, they, if they're looking to attack us, they think, okay, that person is weak. We've changed into a, a fearful, weak state. We're turning, but it's a, it's a lure. It's, it's an opportunity to give the, the other opponent. Once they start to move, we can turn and use that to our advantage. Let's try it just a few more times. So if we're facing west, I'll face another direction. Question, do you have a question? Do you have an idea? Yeah, I have a question. When you do the second kick, and then you do the block punch kick, do you... I know you're all doing it standing on one leg, but do you pivot your leg for the block punch kick? Okay, so this is, yeah, this is a good question. And the way that I do this is I actually do this kind of pivot right here. If, if the foot that's standing is I lift my toe and I turn, right? Lift right. and turn. Lift the toe, turn. If I, maybe easier with the other foot, if I lift and turn, right? Lift and turn. I don't talk about this too much in class because I don't mind if people take a step to do it, or if let's let's uh, let's examine. So we're here. We step back. Kick. One, two, three. Pull. Kick. And then from here, while I'm balancing, I lift my whole structure and turn it on that heel. And I'm doing that. This facing is facing a different direction with the block punch kick. You're facing a different direction. That's right. I'm actually facing, I'm turning 
that the second kick goes to the corner and the block punch kick goes to the west, heads due west. So if, I, if we use this, the angle of my, my thing, the carpet is here and I step back and I kick and I turn, the second kick goes to the 45 as if it's going off to that corner is here, right? Pull and kick and then Right? You see the idea. And that moving, there's a few ways. The, the reason I don't, uh, I don't talk about this a lot in class is because I don't want people to hurt their, their knee. Because this, what this requires is locking the knee in place so that I'm not actually pivoting on the knee. Right now it's dark and I'm wearing dark clothes, so it's difficult to see the alignment. But I don't want anyone twisting their knee. The whole structure has to maintain its, its uh, integrity to turn on the knee like that. Otherwise, when we pull and kick, we can just turn to the corner. Even if my feet are split up to 45, my power is not that scattered. One of the reasons TC taught people to use the square as the basis is to ensure that the feet don't become split because this means our power is scattered. I can't punch with any power like this, right? My power is like this. But if I turn like this, I put my feet, this wedge is powerful in the center. So we want to turn the same thing. We want to have this triangular shape. So the same uh, way when we're here, when we pull kick, we turn two, three, even if I'm facing the 45, I'm facing southwest, and my feet parallel here, I pull kick, and then I block punch kick this way, and step square. This is an okay step. It's beginner. It's not considered the most advanced. It's not considered the best or the most efficient. But it will work, and especially uh, for people working on the balance, working on rebuilding, so they don't have to worry about doing this kind of transfer. Because this rotation, by the way, is what some people use. Uh, this is one thing that TC said, watch, if you watch some Yang style forms, even the Sun style form, they have a, a, the same kind of thing here, is once they kick, this turning happens in place, and then they have a second kick. And TC said that turning in place is nice for a form, but the problem is, if I have an opponent, right, we say, oh, I have to, huh, I gotta turn the camera off again. If I just turn in place, the opponent has an advantage, right? So if I use this, this is the, the thing, right? And this is my opponent, and they have arms and legs just like a regular person. If I'm here, and I just turn, my opponent can still reach me. I have to do more than that. So once I've done this one, instead of just turning in place, I'm making a loop to bring me back to the opponent. Right? If I just turn in place, I'm going to get hit. And this will make, this is again, this is a little difficult to, to teach when we're uh, on the video camera because we don't have uh, another, uh, in person is just a far easier way to teach, especially Bagua, which has a lot of turning. In it. So let's go back to just what we were doing a second ago, which is walking. If you're just walking in a circle, this is one of the most natural things, right? Lee Zee Ming, in his book, uh, Lee Zee Ming was this, the second generation Bible master, one from Dong Hai Chuan, who was the originator of the art. And he said, walking is the master of hundreds of exercises. There are hundreds of exercises not as good as simply walking. And because uh, we, we know he was talking about walking in a circle because he was a Bagua Zhang master. And circle walking is the foundation of the art for Bagua. So turn some, do some the other direction. And again, very the most rudimentary is walking in a circle. Later, they have specific, very special kind of step that you can take when you're walking in a circle called mud stepping. But for now, we can just walk naturally. And so then going back to do the form, if we have two wings in the ear, the body's relaxed, the power 
going to the top, we step back, like the ropes connecting, and then we're turning around the center, connect, kick, block, punch, kick. By the way, this, to, to another detail for this one, is we can use, if I have this free floating bag, we're going to see it more clearly pronounced in the third section, we have something called cross kick here. Right? That, that appears after we do this kick, then we have cross kick. But we can do it on this one as well, where if we imagine like a door. That, I don't remember you ever doing that. Yeah, uh, there's, it's, it's in the third section, it's called cross kick. It, it occurs right before the second fold knees down. So we have, uh, there's something in the third, third section, catch, pull, kick. Scoop, cross kick, brush low, punch low, half, fold knees, change step, roll back. That's in the third section. So, but this same thing, the idea is uh, that we can use the hand and foot for cross kick or block punch kick like a door. See how I have all three of these things turning like a hinge. If your opponent is coming towards you. I'm going to use this, this office chair. If the opponent is coming towards me, and let's say they have weapons, let's say this, this front is where they have all their weapons pointing towards me, right? If I have a door and I can force them to go on one side of the door or the other, then I have a benefit, right? So if I can use my hands and feet to steer their axis, to turn them in that direction, then I know that I can attack safely without their weapons. The same thing here, if I can just simply turn their axis off the center line, then I have uh, the ability to get through their gate without having to face the, the weapons, right? Something like that. Questions, comments, thoughts, how do you feel? More, it's more clear. Yes, thank you. And that third section, when you did it, I remember, I remember it. But when you showed it at first, it looked like your your one leg went behind the other leg. I maybe it didn't, but that's one. Yeah, means. that's and listen. This is there's a couple of things to remember. First off, remember there's a, there's tai chi is like layers. We can have a very rudimentary movement. This is the same thing as the exercise we just did. The very foundation is this very basic kick here. But then we can take that same kick and turn it into this very complex thing. And we can add, if you want to add some sound or power, there's little details uh, from, the, from another Yong style. This is, again, one of the reasons I recommend studying with Master Su, Master Yun. They're talking about, they have in their form, when the wrists turn, the ankle turns. When the, this extends, it's okay for this hand to be slightly higher. Usually in Tai Chi, we think of things being balanced. They say, but well, because this foot is going out, it's okay to raise the rear hand. So these, these are like micro details. They're principles in the Tai Chi that are important to make it correct and be able to maintain the balance in the right way. Uh, I teach at a certain level. Different people teach at different levels. Let's do this one at least three more times, and then we'll look to see see where we're at, right? So if we're facing west, and the right foot's forward, we have two winds in the air, stepping back, standing on the right foot, left foot and left hand working, and then when we go to walk, you don't even have to bring the hands up to the ears, you can just walk. But this is good self-defense. Three steps, standing on the left foot, pull with the right hand, kick with the right foot, and then block, punch, kick, back to the west. Breathing to parry, and then sink the weight, driving forward, down, and forward to punch. Take a deep breath if we're doing right foot forward, two wins in the air, and the ears stepping back, pull left, kick left, and then turning one, two steps, three steps, standing on the left foot, pull right, kick right, 
block, punch, kick, back to the west, breathing deep, focus power. One more time. So with the right foot forward, this is like a gongbu. We're reaching the opponent's structures in front of us. We reach two wings going in their ears. And then when we step back, this hand stays in front of the gate the whole time to protect. And we can slide on the arm or clothing to pull and kick. And then turn in one, two, three, pull with the right side. Kick, cross kick, step, punch. <clears throat> right. So, uh, remember with all of this stuff, there's sort of uh, some inner details. The fancy turning and fancy kicks, all of this, uh, I, I don't recommend this kind of kicking in a martial art when it comes to self-defense. I have one teacher said this, he said there's three kicks he uses, one, two, and three, right? So this is a forward kick, a side kick, and a heel kick like this. Because the reason is, as soon as my foot comes up here, uh, it's easy for me to lose my balance. So if I have to deal with an opponent and they want to raise their foot, they're on one bat, they're on one foot. So this kind of kick is enough to disrupt the structure, the foundation of the opponent. This, uh, the rest of this, when we're making these large scooping, turning, kicking, that's just for, for our own yoga, for a show, right? To demonstrate we can control our bodies in this way. And there's inside of it, there's a lot of martial arts. This is what you see, we're reviewing a lot of details. What happens if this return, right? And catch, pull. Later it just becomes natural, but in the beginning we're looking for all these motions on how to make it correct and do this and that. But you don't even have to cover the hands. If I'm here and I hit the opponent and I step back and pull, when I turn, I can just walk this way. But this is this advanced, it's really advanced because you know you, you know what to expect, you know what the opponent's doing, you have it mapped out in your head. And so there's, there's in, uh, in the car, if you like cars, sports cars, they say there's no replacement for displacement. You, if you want to go fast, you have an engine that has to go fast. In the martial arts world, they say there's no replacement for practice. So if you like to be a very good martial artist, there's, there is only one replacement for practice, and that's practice, which means meditation. So uh, you can replace your practice with the meditation and still get a benefit. Aha, see? But now, if you, if you do it correctly, and you keep the hips level the whole time, right? When we do this turn, if one hip it's difficult to see because I'm wearing all black, but if I have it shifted right, if you can keep that level, you can turn quite a bit and maintain the balance the whole time. So the Tai Chi principles, when we talk about keep your shoulders level, keep the head level, keep the hips in the same level, this is so, because once one is up, raised, it's difficult to recover. But if we can leave the tailbone hanging so that there's gravity, it should be easier to maintain the balance. That's good. That's that's that that one looked better than the previous. So, <clears throat> questions, thoughts, comments. Okay. Well, sorry to start late, but we're gonna we're gonna uh, quit early or leave early, or whatever whatever it is. Uh, so if if there's no more, we'll do some we'll do some qigong. Which, uh, by the way, for those viewers out on YouTube, yeah, question, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, let's figure out what comes before that. We have, oh, you know where it's, it's after cloud hands. So in the third section, if we have cloud hands left and right, and then we have hook, we have this corner whip snake flashing its tongue. When we turn 180, this pull, pull right, kick right, is almost identical to just what we did in the second section. Except now here, all three of these drawings circle. This is cross kick. And that momentum, cross kick, step, brush, punch, right? So that is that what you're talking about, that section right there? <clears throat> because I think there are other kicks in the third section, but uh, let's, so let's focus on that. So from snake, flashing his tongue, 
facing west, I'm going to close my, my foot by lifting the toe and just turning on the heel. Right? So my feet are either 90 degrees, I don't know if you can see one of my shoes, and so uh, snake flower says, thumb, close the heel, and then on this side, I'm turning on the toe, and then just like this. So my left foot and toe is gripping the ground. Again, this one's like a door. Yeah. And your right leg, everything moves at the same time. Yeah, and for this one, I think the last time that we had talked about this one in Westwood in the park is like drawing the number six uh, with all three. Maybe it's backwards number six. It's a backwards, it's a six that goes this way. So it's a yin yang, but you start the six at the top and then you come down and draw the circle this way. So if you see, or you can just think of it as clockwise, three clockwise circles, right? So if, let me face the other direction. If I'm doing snake flashes, it's tongue facing here. When I turn, I close one foot here. I'm in line with the center. I pull with the right side, kick with the right side, and then all three of these make a circle, cross kick to the center, step, brush, punch, right? <clears throat> so let me try to make that slightly more smooth, right? If I'm uh, snake, uh, flashing his tongue, turning, pull right, kick right, cross kick, step, punch, half, What's that? Is it a one circle or two circles? It's sort of one circle. Uh, let's actually let's actually try it, right? So if if we face, I'll face a different direction. I'll face east. When I turn, see, I'm closing this foot so that, and I want to turn this foot as much as I can because I'm going to be facing 180 along that line. So from snake flashes its tongue when I close it, I'm going quite a bit. And then from here, this one. You can touch your foot on the ground to keep balance, but you don't need to. And so if you're making the circle, the power comes out at the top of the circle. So the scooping power. So, uh, and let me, let me, uh, change the second camera again. There's some, sometimes the gym or the uh, facility, they have a, a, a boxing a bag that goes all the way to the ground. That one would be, would be better to show on this technique, but I can use this one as well. The, the power comes out at the top of the circle. So when I'm here, it's at the top is where, the, when we make the circle here, scooping power this way and we'll, we'll we'll analyze this one quite a bit more because this is another complex set that's it's rudimentary that's correct but keep the keep the balance you want to be able to to deliver that power and not lose balance right and it's just this and the top hand is on the open hand yeah for for now just leave it fist and this fist is rolling Right, so my forearm is rolling this way. Uh, this is a, a pretty, pretty basic martial arts technique. Is if there's power coming to the center, this rolling action here actually helps deflect things off of it. So as a deflector, the the, the radial on the bone, these two, these are rotating, right, like a paint roller this way. And this other one is actually the same as when we have a, we make, we do a hook. And we use all five fingers to make a beak fist, except we're using it, if you put your other hand out this way, and you're going to take this beak fist and hit it, and then let it open, right? And so the way that this works is, every, this is all very relaxed, but it has a point 
if like an arrowhead, or like in, a, in we talk about gun culture, they have exploding uh, uh, hollow point bullets, right? So this is the same idea. If I hit the bag, I actually want all five of these points to hit, but I want them to end in a slap. So the points hit, and then after the points hit, the hand opens. So think about smashing an egg into the side of your opponent's face. You're going to actually hit them with this thing, right? Hit this first, and then it opens. So this is the the this is cross kick. So we're hitting this way, hit with this thing, and then after it hits, the fingers relax with power. They're relaxed, but there's power to the backs of the fingertips, so that it opens this way. So and slap at the same time. It's a weird. It's a weird one. This, by the way, somebody was asking earlier this week about knockout strikes. One of the ways to knock out your opponent, your, your face has a bunch of acupressure points. If you can hit 10 acupressure points at the same time, you'll knock anybody out, right? And because the face has so many compressed in the area, if you leave your hand relaxed, soft like this, and you hit somebody's face, you can knock some, this is um, for people looking into fight videos on YouTube and this kind of thing. This is when you see somebody get slapped and they go down, knocked out. It's because if you understand how this technique works, and then combine that with a strike, you're going to hit first, and then after that initial impact, you're going to allow it to expand. So this is this gets into advanced striking. It's something for later. Let's let's try it a few more times before we do some chibo. So we have snake flashing. His tongue. Left foot is forward. Gongbu. Right hand is covering the left hand spear fist through the center. And then when we turn, there's somebody, something behind me. I turn, grip the foot. This right hand is at my gate, the same as the second section, pull right, kick right. And then all three, hands and foot, make the half circle, cross kick, step. So here, this one is like, this fist has unrolled to block. What's whatever's low, and this one has formed its arc, the arch for trajectory, and opened. So this is cross kick and something like this. And then we step this foot into the square. This hand brushes, and we punch to run. Same thing, lined up with the leg. This angle here is the same. And then this one is slightly different. In the second section, we have, uh, and it occurs in the third section as well, full knees down, deeple block or we change this way to do this. And this one, this is a half fold knees. And this contains a, a martial arts technique that uh, in, in Bruce Lee's book, G, Way of Jeet Kune Do, he described this as motor setting. We don't have a name for it, but it's a, it's a form of mind trick. Because if we're dealing with an opponent and they connect to us and we sink and we do fold knees, Right? And then the next time they connect to us and we sink and we do a fold knees, they may connect to us a third time expecting us to sink. And so they actually sink lower, but we only sink to halfway, forcing them to change their thing. So this is, Bruce Lee referred to it as motor setting. And what it means is this, it says, hey look, I hand you this, right? And so you go to take it and I pull away. And then I hand you this, right? And you go to take it and I pull it away. And then I hand you this. And the third time, when you go to take it, instead of pulling it away, I throw it. Right? So he referred to it as setting up somebody's motor skills to fail. Right? He called it motor setting. Right? So the idea is, Dibuhua. 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 And then on the third time, when they try to, they think, okay, they see the pattern. Half Dibuhua, and you win. Right, so you're setting them up. You think, okay, I, I give them this, I give them this, I give them this, and the next time when they're waiting to get this, they get that. Right, so, but it takes. This is one of the the principles that it takes over the course of three uh, forms and and practicing the same posture three times, three different ways. Uh, after several years of learning to understand this strategy, right, uh, you can read it in in Bruce Lee's book if you'd like to do that sort of thing, but uh, now when, you, when you learn it here, you learn it, you're just not reading it. Questions, thoughts, comments? We're going to review all of this stuff because this is stuff that people will need to, to cover over again. Yeah. I remember that part. But can you do that cross kick again?
how do you get when you're opening both arms, right? Mm -hmm. How do you get so that like one comes and another one makes the fist and then you do the circle, or do you do the turning the body? Let me let's. I'll use the camera as the angle, right? So if I'm facing, I have snake flashing his tongue in this way. When I turn, if my opponent is on this central line here, when I turn, I have my gate covered here and I'm facing sideways. So my form is pretty narrow and once I've connected to them and I pull to kick and I'm here, this next one is, I'm actually not moving. I'm turning this. And I can turn my, I can move, I can turn my body, my gait. I can just use the hands. Again, the most basic, how much power is being delivered by the opponent. Is the opponent charging us, right? Do we need to move and get out of the way to turn like that? Or are they standing in front of us? And we can just use a small amount of power to change the dynamic. Let's, can, let's uh, review. Here, when I turn my gait, I have this covering my gait. And whether this opens forwards, backwards, to the side, this is what's happening in the front. And then all three of these. And this is ultimately, we say all three, my two arms and one leg. Ultimately, it's just one structure. We want to use our whole structure. So if the opponent is there, I can use this whole thing from my foot to the top of my head as one piece to to defeat the opponent's structure as well. Yeah. Don't worry, we'll review. This is this is uh it's good questions and it's questions is something you, you have to get to that point in the form to study. So uh, this is it's a great time to answer questions when we don't have a lot of new people here to do this. So for people watching along at home, enjoy the practice. Let's do a little bit of cheat on to close. So from wherever you're at, just breathing. Just taking a bunch of air. And put an intention in your mind because it's Sunday evening. So instead of energizing with lots of chi, imagine the breathing. You can store the energy for the morning, for Monday morning when you have to work. And that the qigong can be a relaxation. So opening the tendons, the psychic meridians. My teacher, Gene, when we talk about martial arts, he would say, <clears throat> Chen Man Ching's quote says, when you're boxing or playing push hands, he says, the hand is not the hand. He says, the whole body becomes the hand when boxing. And my teacher, Gene, would say, in Qigong culture, the lungs are not the lungs, but instead the whole body is the lungs when breathing. Make each one slightly slower than the previous. It's the end of the day, we're winding down. So we want to reduce the activity until it becomes very stable. Go at your own pace, breathing. Try to do three more each one, each inhale, exhale, slightly slower, slightly longer than the previous, until at the end of the third one you find yourself in static, holding the sphere, holding the ball type of position, breathing deep, keep the head top up, relax the tailbone. And then bring everything back to the center, hands and feet. Move your mind into the center. In Qigong culture, in the Chinese culture, there's an idea It says, where the mind goes, the qi follows. So sometimes people become very energized, very energetic. They have too much qi and they have difficulty. And they have a question is, where can I store it? Where, how do I store this, this extra qi? And uh, there's many answers, but one of, them, one of the most basic is in the center, is we have a, a piggy bank for energy in the middle, which is the belly button. And so if you can put your mind there, 
your chi eventually will collect there. There's other major points, the heart chakra, third eye, crown chakra. You can start to store bones inside tendon, uh, start to store chi inside tendons and bone, inside different organs. You can store them in meridians in different places. For now, take a long, deep breath, smiling internally at yourself. And that's it. Call, email, text if you have questions. Thanks for coming out.